Well, it's a marvelous night for a moon dance With the stars up above in your eyes A fantabulous night to make romance Neath the cover of October skies And all the leaves on the trees, they have fallen To the ground of the breezes below And I'm trying to please to the calling Of the heartstrings to play so soft and low And all of the night's magic seem to whisper and hush And all the soft moonlight seems to shine in your blush Can I just have one more dance with you, my love? Can I just have one more? So you'll have recognised uh, Van Morrison's Moon Dance there, which I was playing because I got a conversation the other day with someone about um, using bar chords, and I said that um, I, I generally swear bar chords with as much as I possibly can, mostly because during the course of a, a maybe if you're playing a two or three hour gig and you play a lot of bar chords, it, it, it tends to you build up some fatigue in the in the left hand. Um, so I, I use a form of I use uh, I don't know you could call it shorthand really. Um, the way that the jazzers approach uh, the bar chords. So where you where you would could would play an A minor like this and the B minor. It's a marvellous night for the moon dance With the stars up above in your eyes And so on You get, you, Eventually that's going to That's going to um, It's going to cause a little bit of fatigue Maybe not just in that one song But over the course of a gig And also um, There's a kind of A lack of um, It's not, not quite as punchy Because you've got all these Six, six notes coming at you like, this, like a battery. Um, whereas with the, with this shorthand method, I can put in the chord. I can play the bass line. So what I do, um, rather than play the take the, 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 the root note, the A, on the 5th fret and then I cover either the, the, the B, G and D strings or maybe just the B and G or maybe just the D and G so that uh, either way I've got a form of an A minor chord see so I've got the, I've got the, um, I've got four notes there and I'm picking like this and that A string is dampened by the middle finger the third chord that I used in that little progression was, was an inversion basically so there's the A minor with the root at the bottom there's your B with the root at the bottom and there's the A minor again, but this time it's an inversion. I'm actually playing what essentially is a, is a C major seven, but in a, in the, in the context of a of a band, there'll be a bass player playing an A, which renders this into uh, automatically into into a form of an A chord, an A minor chord in this case, with a with a ninth, which is going to sound great. Or alternatively, I can put, alternatively, I can put my own bass line in. Well, it's a marvelous night for a moon dance with the stars up above in your eyes. A fantabulous night to make romance. Why am I singing this song all again? 
I remember years ago when when there was um, you know when it, when you when you're in school and there's 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 a little gang of guitar players and uh, every now and again you meet one or two of them and, and you have a jam session. And I remember this this one time this fellow and he said he said do you know smoke on the water and I said yeah and he said listen to this. <laughs> like okay <laughs> that's that's kind of not wrong but this is battery of notes going on and it doesn't have a, a, a nice stylish feel to it so um as you know Richie would have played on the machine head album Richie does this playing it in fourths or you can do the same thing down here Do the same thing again, you can put in the bass line. So all I'm doing is keeping that that G running through the whole thing while I'm playing this. stylish air uh, sounds sounds more interesting basically so um the other the other thing is um is the question of of playing the bar chord with the uh, electric guitar i'm going to swap so when it comes to the electric guitar there's no problem with the bar chord Things are fairly clean. I can play that third. I can play the, the major seven even. But what's what's going to happen is um, once you once you start uh, driving the uh, the amp a little bit more, and the gain comes in, um, it's not called distortion for nothing. It's basically a um, a, a signal that, that somehow corrupted. So um, you get. I mean, most 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 applications, there's no distortion except for the guitar. So there we've got the fifth and the G at the top. That's our power chord. There's no third involved. Um, and I've I've heard it argued that that, that people uh, use the um, the power chord uh, because it's it's easier to do it's it's and it's less musical it's not valid and in terms of quality guitar playing but the opposite is true because when it comes to the um, the electric guitar with 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 gain involved. The, the fifth or the power chord is important because it doesn't oscillate there's there's no there's no kind of uh, dissonance going on so you get this nice uniform sound so if I just play the fifth the G and the D it's not a bad sound if I play the third the G and the B you can hear that oscillation So if I play the, the G, B and the D, the whole triad, there's, a, there's, a, there's an oscillation there. It doesn't exist with the fifth. And the power chord's not a, not a, a new thing, generally. It's not, it's not there for easy guitar playing. There's, there's lots of music that, you, that uses it. The, the, I mean, the monks used to harmonise in fifths um, hundreds of years ago. Uh, I've heard people, pianists and, and classical musicians, refer to a hollow fifth. Which means playing a chord with no third. So, so the power chord is, is pretty useful. It, keep, it keeps the music more in tune and 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 cancels out the dissonance. So, the, I mean, if if you've got um, a bit of a bite, it 
it's not bad. But once you start driving it too much. So I've got the E the in there now. Nice beefy kind of fat sound. That's why on a song, say, say just take for instance um, another brick in the wall. On the, the rhythm guitar section on the D minor, there's no distortion. So that sounds okay. So if you take it up a little bit. It doesn't, it doesn't work as well. So when you get to the chorus, we've got these nice big block power chords. I suppose that the useful, you know, a kind of useful application for that, for that dissonance you know, playing with gain and and uh, adding the the, uh, the whole the whole triad, you putting the third in the middle would be in a kind of maybe in a punk band where you where you want that slight um, you know that that little bit of um, it just creates some angst in the sound that extra dissonance. <laughs> Kind of glorious abandon involved in doing that, but for you know, for a, a, a more of a metal application, you just want the thick, the hollow fifth. <laughs> in general, so generally, if wherever possible, because of the, for one thing, the, the physical fatigue aspect of the power chord, particularly if, you, if you're strumming away at an, an acoustic, um, and there's bar chords everywhere. Like I say, over the course of a gig, that can start to irritate, and you know your joints, and your fingers and your knuckles, particularly that area there between the thumb and the and the finger. Um, one thing I should say though is is that it's never mm -hmm. never a good idea to play a bar chord with um with a with a with a vice like grip. So you don't. Just nice, gently, as gentle as. Just try and play a bar chord in the way that you normally would, and then consciously release the pressure between your thumb and your fingers. That opposable uh, force that's going on is probably, or maybe more, more than you need, and you can you feel like you can relax, and you you just hug that. Like I say, if you turn that finger on its side and just hug gently. It's a lot less. Uh, there's a lot less, lot less effort required than you might think. So, so I tend to um, again. I I tend to avoid the bar chord for musical purposes, for physical purposes. And also that 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 power chord thing that that you don't want that dissonance in there, and there's always a way around it. So say for instance, if you're playing um, E7 and you're thinking, well, there's that one there, or even the ninth if you feel a bit more adventurous, or you can just stick to the bar chord. So the one other thing I I, I'm, I'm, I could mention is that is that um, the, the cheats as well, uh, which I all, all already do always use. <laughs> so the one other the only other thing I think I can mention is is um, you you can cheat. You know you don't have to you can use the, the bar chord. So just say the F and the G. Are you playing a song with the C? A minor, F, and G. Well, you can you can um, you can wrap your thumb over.
So now I'm playing the F on the first fret of the E string with the, with the, with the thumb. There's a, an English guitarist called Wilco Johnson. And a lot of his technique is 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 basically playing rhythm guitar with that with that shape, that chord shape, with his thumb wrapped over the top. So he's playing the the uh, the, the, the low string, and he's playing the top half of the chord, and then he does this little bluesy. Um, issues with regards to the uh, bar chord give me a shout in the comments because I'm thinking I've covered most things but maybe not okay see you soon